start tapping, don't yell at me, it'll make you nervous. <laughs> I've been doing this for 17 years, and the way I even got started in politics was really quite a sad story. My brother died in 95, and I was looking, and my son had finished his, was finishing up his college baseball career. My daughter was already into her career and moved. She was living in Portland, Maine. And I needed something to do that I thought was very important. I never had a goal to be in politics, never even thought about it, never considered it any way whatsoever. Well, then I started going to Republican Women because it was available to me, and to the Republican Club because it was available to me. And that was really the only reason why, because it was available. And the more I got started, I, I started in the fall of 95, but you know, if these people find out your work, you'll work your hand off from thereafter. It will never end. And they found out that I like to work, and so they worked my hand off by that spring of 96, I was on the executive committee, and his, you know, God bless us all, we do crazy things. I, I have people here that walk for me hours and hours, Betty Farmer, Larry Farmer. You know, you do crazy things. I lost 23 pounds that first summer when I ran. I needed to lose 23 pounds. But it was a lot of fun, it was very hard, but the way I even got started is, God bless her, Joe Buck, who now lives in Gulf Shores. She, well, first of all, Ellen Journeyman asked me to run for the seat vacated by the former mayor of uh, South Haven. And I thought, oh, you know, Ellen tries to recruit everybody to run. I don't know if I'm going for that or not. Lord, if you really mean, and, and I'm serious, this is the way I live my life. Lord, if you really mean for me to do that, you would have to get somebody besides Ellen asking me to do that. Because I've got to have a confirmation that this is just not some of a weird phase in my life. So lo and behold, the very next day, Joe Buck called me, and she said, what I've been thinking about it. She said, you really need to run for that seat that so-and-so is vacating. And I said, okay. So that's exactly what I did, and that's how it happened. I have never regretted it for a single day. Now, I tell the story that some days in Jackson, you get out on the floor, and it's a special kind of Hades out there because people are acting so crazy and acting so bad and saying so many half-truths. And then there have been issues where I have come out there and I have listened for six hours in a row to people present this side of the bill and this side of the bill. They did it in a way that Thomas Jefferson himself would take pride right in. And then when you get through late at night, both sides go out to dinner and eat with each other. Well, this is the way we have striven all these years to be is we have, we have worked to say, you have a right to your thoughts, you have a right to your thoughts. When it's all said and done, let's build a consensus and let's roll with it. So right here, I'm going to go through a very quick handful of bills that we passed this last year. And Pat Nelson and um, Chris and I were meeting at 8.30 this morning, and Pat told us that we had voted on 1,402, 1402 bills this last session. Well, that ain't count the ones that we did away with in committee. So when we get down there, and, and I need to say this, you're looking at the most boring legislator in Jackson. I'm just flat out boring. I go to work, I meet my committees, I research the issues, and I vote. Forrest Hamilton laughs at me constantly, and he tells Pat, oh, Wanda will be home at the crack of 6 o'clock in, in the evening. If, if we're not in the building, I'm not messing with these guys. I love the job. I get sick of looking at them, and I, I'm out of there. I go to my room and watch old Walton's reruns and stuff. But this is some of the things that we did. Um, basically, everything comes down to appropriations. Everything culminates from September on. It builds to appropriations. I'm on the appropriations committee, and that has been to the benefit of the Soda County many times. What we, have, what we do is all year long, we do this side, this side, Senate pass out some, we pass out some, then in the end you get together, you take part of the Senate, you take part of the House, and you come together with a bill. So none of this is as cut and dry and simple as it sounds. This last year we put uh, $244.6 million into mental health. That's up 2.9%. In corrections, we put $346 million, that's up 2.4%. In public safety, we put $88 million. That's up 21%. And in that was $6.9 million for a trooper school to have 60 new officers throughout the state of Mississippi. 
folks in DeSoto County, we rarely even have three officers assigned to DeSoto County, so we don't even have all shifts covered. Okay, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you. If you want to ask me any questions, come in. Probably I'm listening at the book. Call me at home if you got any really.